Robbie Earl was Jamaica's first World Cup Finals goal scorer. Jamaica for the very first time on the final of the CONCACAF Gold Cup. It's a lovely ball. Havana Salon ran the keeper and in! What a brilliant goal for Jamaica! I live for Tuesdays. Thursdays is well enough, but Tuesdays come first. So you know what's on? Reggae Football Nation. The only football show that informs you about all things Reggae Football. Reggae Football Nation is produced by the GFF, the Jamaica Football Federation, and takes an in-depth look at football in Jamaica. Each week, we discuss trending issues and major developments with the administrators, the coaches, the players, stakeholders, as well as the history makers. I'm your host, Tamara, Miss T, and boy, do we have an interesting podcast for you today. Hey, my name is Taj Dixon. General Olio. My name is Wayne Walker. Joseph Vargas. Dr. Romaine Edwards. It's Andre Blake. Goalkeeper for the Philadelphia Union. A physician for the Waterhouse Football Club. Superman Sands, four time Olympian. And I am from Panama. Turn and Tobago. Canada. Bahamas. Fort Morrison, Catch. Kingston, Jamaica. I'm staying home to help start the spreading of COVID 19. Stay home as much as possible. Sanitize what you have to sanitize. You wash your hands. Stay inside. Follow the right fashion. Follow the rules. Take this time to improve in some areas in my life as a player, as a person, as a son. As the minister will say, there's life after COVID. To all the communities out there, firehouse, keep safe. We're playing in a game that feels like the World Cup Finals. We're playing against the coronavirus and we have to win. Please, please remember, we are in this together. We are in this together. We are in this together. One love. One love. Love you all. On Friday, 15th May, via a press conference, the Jamaica Football Federation announced the cancellation of the 2019-2020 football season. On this episode of RFN, we discussed with President Mr. Michael Ricketts and Chairman of the Competitions and Regulatory Committee, Mr. Gregory Daly, about the reasons for the decision to cancel the season, more so making it null and void. Let's go straight into the meat of the matter. A lot of people are saying that the decision to cancel the 2020 season was immature, premature, and inconsiderate. From the GFF standpoint, why was it necessary for us to cancel the 2019-2020 season? Let's start with you, Mr. President. First of all, let me congratulate the competitions committee, of course, headed by Gregory Daly, who provided a comprehensive document as it relates to the cancellation of the competition 2019-2020. Of course, when we look at the health from a health perspective, if we were ever not to have canceled these competitions, we'd still be having additions by the scores. These were recommendations from the competitions department. Of course, when we place them in front of the board of directors, it was unanimously supported. And it would have been very irresponsible of us as the JFF to put ourselves in the position where we would have been the catalyst for an outbreak of a contagious disease that is certainly causing major illnesses and certainly loss of life. So the JFF, I think, was very prudent in its decision and it was based exclusively on a recommendation and, of course, from the majority of the board of directors supporting the recommendations that was made by competitions. When you look at the Premier League, I personally canvassed most of the teams in the Premier League, and I dare to say at least nine of the teams indicated to me that they had no interest in participating. It was not feasible from a financial standpoint, and it was a danger and a risk from a health perspective. So the JFF had no other option but to have cancelled the I mean, health comes first. And irrespective of the fact that the JFF has the overall responsibility for football, we must be very careful and we must be very prudent. And if it should happen again, we would do it how we did it this time. Mr. Daly, um, the president talked about the recommendations that the competition department would have made. 
are you willing to highlight some of those recommendations? Because I think people need to understand the checks and balances that have to be put in place to ensure that a decision, as the president said, would not affect the fans, would not affect your players, would not affect your officials. So could you just explain to us what were some of the items or what were some of the, the things you were looking for to ensure that the decision that you made was prudent for all the stakeholders? First and foremost, let me say that the, the competitions and regulatory committee is set up to deliberate on competition matters and regulatory matters, not for a competition, but competition across the island the length and breadth of Jamaica, right? Um, in considering, in our deliberations, right, we have to think about not only the Premier League, but the Super League, the major leagues, the Division ones, and all football that are played across the country. But we must consider all the other competitions within the island, all right? So in even looking at it in that aspect, for us to continue playing football now, under what condition are we going to be playing? Can we play football with social distancing? I don't think that is possible, all right? Uh, we look at what is going on around the world right now. I can say openly that I don't think there is another person in Jamaica that has ever gone through a pandemic. This is something that is new to us, okay? This is something that has in every corner of the world has affected sport, the economy, it has affected every aspect of our lives. Now the, 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 the arguing point is health and wellness and our lives. Are we willing to put our lives at risk? That is one major question, right? We, have, we are seeing the powerhouses still grasping at straws, not knowing what to do or how to control this pandemic, right? Now, we have all the factors that we sat, we deliberated on. This is not something that we came up with overnight. We, we, we had, first we had deliberation over the phone before even meeting, right? We came together, we had a meeting that lasted almost four hours looking at different points. We understand what would have taken place we knew that everybody will not have accepted this. But we know that one, if the decision is made now, we would be premature. If we await until, say we continue football and we have an outbreak, we would be reactive. So we, we, we discuss all of this. We understand what would have happened. We can't sit and think about a competition. We have to think about football across Jamaica how it would have impacted, would we be proactive? We have to take all of the consideration. It's not about decisions to favor a particular competition. It is more far-reaching. So I think that if we really sit and look at the impact that this pandemic is having on our society globally, I think that we would really, not just thinking about ourselves, our competition, but all our players, all our referees, all our managers, everybody that take part in this wonderful sport. The aim is to keep everybody safe. The football will continue, but under what umbrella? How would we move forward? That is where we are now, is how we move forward. Right now, we are yes, not man. even sure. We have an opening of a season. Um, we say September, that does not mean that football will be played in September. Because we cannot decide what is going to happen or how things are going to turn out. We argue also that the, the country is slowly opening up. But opening up a business is different from playing football. Mm -hmm. Because I can stipulate restrictions. You have to wear a mask to enter my business. We only accept this number of persons within the business at any one, one time, right? Football will always be played with 22 players on the pitch, plus four, three, a minimum of three referees. Um, we have the, the substitutes on the bench. We have the coaches. We have the, the medical staff. We have all of this. This is 
standard for football, right? So we can't just keep comparing economic being opened and football not being played. Now we see where um, the, the, the German Bundesliga has started. Now look at the restrictions. Can we afford those stuff? One team going to a game is traveling in three different buses. Numerous entrants to a venue, right? Players, players must be tested. After tested, are we in a position to keep these players together, not sending them back to their families? Then when they come back, they'll have to be retested again. The referees, they have to take all these things into consideration because that's why we are football administrators. We love the sport. I wouldn't mind football being planned and would it be safe for us to move forward? I, I agree with you totally. What you say when you say that you cannot ensure the health and safety of the players. From a financial aspect, persons are saying, well, you know, you're taking away the livelihood of the players. Most of them are already receiving a limited amount of income. They've had to take a pay cut. Let's look at from a financial aspect. Can you help? the players going forward for these next couple of months, not knowing when the next season is going to start, to ensure that they do not lose the livelihood that they have now. If we look at it from a financial standpoint. The clubs voted unanimously or gave an indication unanimously that affordability was one of the issues, separate and apart from the health concerns. And I know for sure that Two of the major clubs in the Premier League say they would have lost at least $10 million playing the remainder of the competition without any gate receipts. Like Director Daly said, we have venues that can't be made sterile because persons are going to come into these venues. So it is impossible to say that we're going to play without spectators. People are going to filter in and we are going to expose our players and we're going to expose our officials. So the truth is that we could not have allowed because of finances. And I'm saying again that the most important thing here is the health, safety and well-being of not just our players, but all the stakeholders. So um, we, we certainly would have made this decision after a lot of consultation and a lot of serious, serious discussions, looking, of course, at the pros and cons. So, indeed, it's something that uh, it was made after a lot of discussions with key stakeholders, ministers of government, um, club owners, parish presidents, and the consensus was that the right thing to do was to have abandoned or cancelled the competition. So we have no regrets. I'm sure that we did the right thing in the interest of the health and well-being of our players and officials. Persons would say you, you shouldn't have just abandoned it. Null and void means it never happened. Yeah, and I think a lot of that, persons are having the qualms with the null and void. Why you just would that, not give, give who's at the top the championship title? And at least persons would have felt that they, the time and the investment that they would have had up to that stage didn't mean anything. I am sure a number of, 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 of stakeholders would cry foul at that because we do not play a straight league. We have a league at the initial stage of the competition and then, of course, the top six go through. So, as it is now, any of those six teams could have won the competition. So, it's not a situation where two or three teams were way out front and it was hardly likely that they could be surpassed. As it is now, there is no single team that would be in a pole position that would make them say, not like a Liverpool. But as it is now, Waterhouse was in front by maybe two or three points ahead of Mount Pleasant, then Portmore, Humble Lion, Arnold Gardens. So there were six teams, as it is now, as the competition, based on the structure of the competition, that any one of those six teams could have won the competition. So a number of these teams would cry foul if we were able to have done that. Mr. Daly, just expound more on that. He said a lot of the teams would have cried foul. Uh, do you agree with the press on that one? 
Yes, I do agree. Um, based on um, our format, I think if possibly, if we were further advanced in the, the possibly the knockout stages, um, we could have even considered. But where we are now, moving into the, the top six, which is a knockout stage, we have seen several times, for example, Arnett Gardens, um, one of our clubs that came through, I think, twice in the sixth position and ended up winning the league, right? It, it's a difficult situation for the clubs. Yes, we know that. We do acknowledge it. But um, I think at that stage, we could not have gone and awarded the trophy to a club. And that is across the board, because we're not just talking about Premier League. That would have been across the board. Well, across the board, what we find out is because how the competitions are played across the island. There, there were some in more advanced stages than some. But I don't think there is no competition. I think Western in the Super League was, was the farthest. I know that St. James, where I'm at in our major league, we were in the return stage. But I don't think we can find two parish across the island that their competition was in that advanced stage that we could have made that kind of pronouncement. Let's look at the stakeholders, your sponsors. They would have already invested a certain amount of money up to this stage. What does the paradigm look now in terms of continuing that long-term investment with these stakeholders who put all of that into the season so far? Well, I'm pretty sure like, just like any business, um, sometimes you would have lost on your investment. Um, I am sure that these sponsors understood. In fact, we had some discussions with some of them and they supported the decision. So again, I'm saying it's health first. And um, this is not unique to us as the JFF. This is a pandemic. This is affecting the entire world. So investors and sponsors, I'm sure, would understand. And certainly, would if they would have lost, then certainly they would have understood the situation. We must protect the health of our, our stakeholders. I'm pretty certain that they will be back. Let's hope so. I want to discuss in terms of uh, the the national teams and the reggae football in general we we don't have any competitions to identify anything that stage is going forward so we just have to stick as is how do you think that is going to affect our standings at fifa standings in concacaf how do you think that is going to affect you know jamaica's outlook in terms of football FIFA would have made a determination some weeks ago that the, the rankings would be frozen. So as we speak, um, there is no question of us maintaining our ranking because no team would be able to acquire points. So um, that is not worrying too much after they would have lifted the freeze for want of a better word then certainly uh, we will, by then, everybody, all the countries, certainly by then, would be in a position to increase your points tally or decrease, as the case may be. So um, we're not worried too much about that. And like I said, this is not unique to us. It is affecting the entire world. So all the teams would have the same difficulties, albeit some probably would be based on, on resources and facilities, would be able to recover a little faster than some but um we are preparing behind the scenes and i'm pretty certain that when you get the green light we would be in a state of of readiness not a hundred percent but we would be in a state where we could take some positives from our preparation what are your final words to the general public for us to silence the upheaval that has been stirring among the masses since this announcement was made. And you know, I'm not sure that is even a correct or a fair comment um, because the, the majority of the stakeholders certainly agreed. The vice president for, or the vice chairman rather, for, for the PLCA is really making the rounds, trying to discredit the JFF for doing the right thing, I'm sure. But, uh, we want to encourage our fans that we will be back um, the competition as long as we get the go ahead from the relevant authorities, that's the Ministry of Health, and of course, from the Office of the Prime Minister. 
and certainly from our parent organization, then we'll be, be ready and we'll be unveiling some things that um, would quickly allow them to, would have forgotten the past. So I'm um, just encouraging them. This is World Cup qualifying year. I um, have no idea what's, <clears throat> what's going to transpire later down the road, but I'm pretty certain that we'll make it up to our fans. On a competition standpoint, as we all know, we can't determine what is going to happen in the future, but we hope that everything will be okay for, for a go. And as soon as the green light is given, I think that um, we'll be ready and waiting, continue to try to make the best decision on behalf of the competitions within the island, as usual, and as always, put health before well. Thank you very much, Mr. Perez. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. I'm hoping that at the end of this discussion, that persons will feel a little bit better about the decision that was made to cancel the league. Well, not just to cancel the league, cancel all competitions. Thank you for the time, and it was a very interesting discussion. Okay. Thanks for having us, madam. Something fresh, something new, something different is coming to the JFF Live Digital Platform. You heard me. All your reggae football needs straight from the source. Three informative, entertaining, and interesting programs to fill your weekly tank. Tuesdays and Thursdays at 12.30 p.m. It's Reggae Football Nation. Follow us on SoundCloud and our weekly trivia. The final football will now play. Then coming soon on Sundays at 3.30 p.m. Join us live on Facebook and YouTube for Reggae Football Live. You have never seen football chatter like this. Your summer is on us with Reggae Football in the streets on Ready TV. Nothing but fun and football when we hit the ground. Reggae Football Reggae Nation, Reggae Football, Reggae football Reggae Live, Reggae, Reggae Football in the streets. JFF Live, the energy, the culture, the vibes of Jamaican football. Like, subscribe, or follow us on all social media platforms at Jamaican Football Federation. That is JFF underscore football. Jamaican Football Federation. Play hard, play fair, play for life. Today's highlights looks back again at Jamaica's elevation to League A of the CONCACAF Nations League. Here's match three against Aruba. Kamara Lawrence back towards the spot. Deflected shot and an opening goal for Jamaica. Devin Williams. Marshall, Kamara Lawrence. And a heavy touch from Orja. Back to his left, it's Nicholson on his right. Abdul stood him up. Keeps it a one point deficit for Aruba. Here's a break for Aruba, their best chance of the night. Deflected, and it's wide. Quick restart for Jamaica. It's on here, and a penalty given. And he skies it onto the track. Missed opportunity for Nicholson. Onto his right, spinning. Nicholson finally gets his goal. The Reggae Boys, a comfortable 2-0 win. Nine points from three matches in Group C. Ah, uh, don't cry. Thursday's right around the corner. I don't want to leave as much as you do, but as usual, time flies when we're having fun. Thanks to President Ricketts and Chairman Daly for clearing up the air about the cancellation of the season. As they said, the safety and well-being of the players, staff, stakeholders and you, the fans, must come first. Reggae Football Nation is produced by the Jamaica Football Federation and I'm your host, Tamara. Remember, you can follow us on all social media platforms, Instagram and Twitter at JFF underscore football. Facebook at the Jamaica Football Federation and SoundCloud at Reggae Football Nation. If you're interested in becoming a partner of the JFF or even sponsoring Reggae Football Nation, contact us at 876-926-1182 or 876-929-8036 or 876-881-1814 or drop us a line at jamff at hotmail.com. That's J-A-M-F-F -F at Hotmail.com. So on behalf of our production team and my producer, Jason Campbell, I want to say thanks for staying with us on another Reggae Football Nation. Where for now football? We now play.